Hey everyone, today we're looking closely at a knife from Amazon and a knife from a reputable dealer, Blade HQ. Let's get into it. So, I got this knife in black about uh, three years ago in 2020 when we had the cold steel scare where they were being sold to another company and everybody, including myself, thought, hey, I might want to get myself a couple cold steel knives before the quality changes or a lot of the designs drop out or whatever. And I'm happy to say, you know, three years later that that was not the case, that they kept everything pretty, pretty much how it was in the past. So um, regardless, because of that, uh, I was able to make a decision to still use some of the cold steels that I have as opposed to just keep them as collector pieces. Another thing, I was changing my mind about always opting for the black option. I decided I'm gonna get this knife again. I wanna use it and I wanna carry it to work and everything, but I don't necessarily want it to just always be in black. The knife I've been using for work, I've been using this knife as an everyday carry. This is a zero tolerance 801 titanium with a titanium pocket clip that's aftermarket, really like ties the knife together and everything. This is a very good quality knife, excellent action. It runs on ball bearings, so you're never gonna get like a like a half opening. It's just always gonna fly out. It locks very nicely, no play up and down or side to side or anything. Um, the problem with it is I occasionally do have to lend the knife out to the people that I work with, and I'm surprised to find that there's still people out there that don't know how to operate a frame lock. Frame lock for me has always been a very straightforward um, mechanism to figure out how to unlock. But regardless, I've had a couple people in a couple different instances that are pushing the lock bar in the opposite direction. They're pushing it deeper into the lock, into the locked position, which is gonna wear my knife down over time. Now this knife is discontinued, so its value only goes up by the year. So I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna keep it in my collection and I wanna make sure that it stays in good condition. So also another thing about it was when I started browsing for this knife in green, this 8015, I couldn't really find as many as I did back then. I don't know if they're phasing them out or if we're just kind of, everybody's low on stock or whatever, but I wanted to spend under 150. And on that first day, I found one on eBay for 110 with a lanyard, no box, it was used, but it was in really good condition. And I decided to sleep on it. And the next day when I woke up, I went to go purchase it and somebody else had bought it. So I guess it wasn't meant to be. And then I looked around more. Um, I, for some reason, Knife Center didn't have any and Blade HQ had them for 170. Cold Steel on their website has them for 270, which is kind of crazy for me. So I took my chances with Amazon. I found one, uh, one seller that had two of them left in stock and they were for 140 each, which is, that's right around the price range. I really feel this knife should be. They're made in Taiwan, you know, they're not made in the US. And even though they're made out of premium materials, I kind of expect that. That's like a basic standard nowadays. Like when you go buy a car, it doesn't matter if you're looking for a Mercedes or uh, something fancy or a, just a Corolla. Uh, it's gonna have certain things like power steering. It's gonna have little things that have become kind of like an industry standard that even the lower end things should have. I have $20 knives that have ball bearings. They're cheap, they're made in China. It's not anything, it's not a big whoop anymore nowadays to have something like, you know, a good quality steel with a good quality heat treat on a knife that's still factory made in Taiwan. There's not a ton of attention to detail that goes into it besides quality control at the end. So for me, it's kind of basic that it should have good metal. Um, I don't think that because it's got quality, premium quality materials, you should pay $200 for a knife that's made in Taiwan. And if I bring this knife up again, the zero tolerance is made in the US. Titanium handles, fully titanium handles, and I have the titanium pocket clip, like I said. And this knife is an S35VN blade as well. So it's got the same steel that both the 8015s have. And this knife I bought for $200 when I bought it. Of course, nowadays it's a lot more valuable than that because they are hard to find and they stopped making them. But that's besides the point. The point is I bought a US made knife with premium quality materials, ball bearings, S35VN, titanium handles for 200 bucks. So I'm not too happy to spend $200 on a knife that's made in Taiwan just because of the premium materials. I still feel like it's, a, it's an import, you know? So it's different. Anyways, 
I got this knife on Tuesday. Today is Saturday. And I compared, the first thing I compared was the boxes. I looked for print quality and I looked at the packaging. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of how I looked at these together. I wanted to make sure it wasn't a counterfeit and I know kind of what to look for. I have some experience with knives so I can tell certain things. I know sometimes um, counterfeit knife makers, they'll, uh, they'll kind of like skip out on the quality on some things. Packaging is usually one of them. But I noticed some very important similarities. First of all, you see that it's uh, kind of gloss coated only on the knife and the rest of the box is printed matte. Now remember, I bought the black 8015 about three years ago, so it's not the same all the way around. It's the same knife and the same design, but they've made some minor changes. I'm not sure when it happened, but I noticed that Cold Steel also changed their logo. This one has a Kobun looking knife going through, cold and steel. And this one has just like a random, it looks like a knife point there. Uh, besides that, here we go, same thing. They swapped the side of the warning label, different logo. The barcodes look the same. This print looks the same, different logo, but same thing. And they changed the back print a little bit. Not a lot though. Obviously they changed their phone number too as they changed locations. As you can see, the knife I bought before they were sold, the, before Cold Steel was fully sold to um, I don't remember what the name of the company is. It's like GPM or something like that. They were here in California. So they have the California address and a California phone number. And nowadays they have the Texas address and a Texas phone number, I'm guessing. Warranty information. And then a little picture of the knife. A couple pictures and icons here of their um, social media. But another thing I looked at was this little tape that they used to close the box off. It's pretty standard, but it's the same. What I'm looking for is kind of uniformity. They have the same kind of thing over here. I only open this side. And then the last thing I looked for was when I open the box, how does the knife come out? And it comes out simply bubble wrap with nothing else. So pretty straightforward there. Um, after I did that, I compared both knives side by side, the actual knife, the weight, the action, you know, the dimensions, fit and finish, etc. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a good quality knife, but looking at them both close together, and this is the one that I know for sure is an authentic knife because I got it from a reputable dealer at Blade HQ, and this is the one that I was kind of in question about. Yes, there's some tape on there. Um, we'll talk about it later. Ooh, that's a nice piece. <laughs> but the first thing I looked at was, like I said, the weight, the dimensions, the feel, the action of the knife, just seeing how it sounds when I open and close it. Because if the materials are the same, it should have the same sound too. Dimensions are the same, it should have the same feel as well. And everything is the same pretty much. I looked at the uh, laser engraving here, and I looked at the laser engraving on the back, which I also noticed then had a different logo. And then I looked at the fit and finish, which I know from the original one that I owned, is not amazing it's okay it's okay with me especially because i like i said i'm using this as a tool but you can see there's a little bit of a gap here the liner doesn't blend in super well with the g10 handle the g10 feel is very important because g10 feels like g10 as soon as you pick up plastic or even like grn or some what we call glorified plastics it feels very different but this is definitely g10 as well we have the same kind of fit and finish here. You see the liners are kind of, I can hang my nail off of this. And it's not a problem for me. As a matter of fact, that's what lets me know that it's the same manufacturer. And it's nothing like the Spyderco I have. I have this, um, this one is the Spyderco Navaja, I believe. Um, look at the fit and finish on the backspacer here. I can't see the liners where the, I can, uh, I can barely see it in this light right here where the liners end and the backspacer starts. But you can barely, definitely can't hang your nail off of anything here. It's all one solid piece. This is a USA made Spyderco. They don't make this anymore, but I got it as a gift a while back from my dad for a birthday. It's my fancy knife. I take this on fancy dates when I'm wearing something nice. But this knife is not, the same um, fit and finish wise. If the fit and finish was considerably worse, that's something that I would have taken a look at, but it was about the same. 
So besides the logo change, it is the same knife. And lastly, like I said, I bought this on a Monday, got it on Tuesday because it was Amazon, so I got the quick shipping. And after using it for a whole week, today is Saturday, I can tell you from experience with S35BN, especially from my zero tolerance, that this is definitely S35BN. It's holding the same edge. It's keeping itself sharp. It's got like, I lost a little bit of the edge, but I've been chopping boxes with it all week long and I haven't had a problem at all. So I can safely assume that just like my black one, it is an authentic knife and I've been using it already. I decided to let this one go. If you guys are interested in this, you can find the item number in the description. It's up for sale on eBay. If you're considering buying it, go and put an offer in as soon as possible because it's not gonna last forever. I do wanna sell it for a good price because it's in really good condition. You only have some very light scuffing of the paint up here on the lock bar because the aluminum lock bar with the coating is pretty soft. So it scratches pretty easily, but I'm gonna be putting it back in the box and that one's gonna be ready to go. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the view. Don't forget to subscribe and like for more videos. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts about it. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks, catch you guys next time.